Now, there are a couple things you got to do when you actually get your MPC 3.5 on your computer lined up. You got to make sure that you don't sort of take an MPC 2.15 project and then load it into MPC 3 and then resave it as an MPC 3 project and record over MPC 2. We got that. So you want to keep the MPC2 and the MPC3 separated because it's beta. And they warn you about that also here inside the software. Now, these are release notes they released also as well. And uh, obviously, you see this release notes is for the MPCs, as you see right there. And of course, there's a compatibility thing going on here where MPCs, MPC3 installs alongside of MPC2 allowing you to use both versions independently. Please note, MPC or project created in MPC3 are not backward compatible to MPC2, right? That's important to realize that. So, uh, for example, if I come down to here, let me just move this out of the way. I have this thing called horror. I don't say a horror track, right? So I've got a track here, and this is an MPC2. Another version here, it's an MPC3. Now, this is important to make sure I have these two versions. I may want to do something different, you know, like, uh, for example, I come to here. This is two. I'll click on here, and uh, it should load up inside MPC2, um, which is right here. I need to pull that up. Here it is, MPC 2.15. And you can check that here, of course. And there's 2.15.1 and I'll play the track back sort of like a uh, car commercial type thing and so we got this track it's in two and I'm going to want to pretty much keep that. But now I'm going to go to here. I'm going to quit this. And no need to save that. And next one, open up three. So I'll go to here. Let me hide this. And three's here. I'll click on three. And so three, as you can see here, opens up. Let's click right over here, All right? And I come here and say I want to do, uh, oh, here's horror right here, actually. Here's horror right here. So I'm probably going to come up with this empty project right here. And of course, this track loads up. And so I'm going to come to here, about NPC, and you'll see this is 3.5. Now, this is mixed different, but. So I've got tracks going on here. Now, what I've done also is I've actually routed these tracks out so I can have them go to another software. So in order to do that, I want to see if they can actually be sent to Ableton Live and see if we can do that through three or through two. So we're going to come in here now. I'm going to get out of here. We're going to quit. MPC 3.5. All right, cool. So now I'm going to come into, let's see, I want to use probably Ableton hmm, 12 or 11. Let's try 11 first. All right, cool. Here's 11. So the MPC works with a lot of different softwares, and Ableton Live is no different. So here I have an MPC template, right? And you can see right here in plugins, we have VSTs and VST3 and AUV2, right? So I come to here, I can look at Akai Professional. I come down to here, uh, I think there, right? So I come up to here, I go to VST right here. We got custom, right? Custom right here. Close that up too as well. 
It's all right here. These are all the air products. Need some plugins. So VST plugins. And we got AU up here as well. And for Cotton Professional here. And you see NPCs right here under AUV2. So now what I want to do is I'm going to come to the template I created. And I'm going to go to here. I'm going to launch this template. Now what it's going to do is it's going to pull in the MPC application. And that app will be here inside of Ableton 11, Ableton Live 11. And so you want to see if you can actually pull it in this way, because I'm not too sure, but I'm pretty sure it's just going to be 2.15, because they're still working on the MPC 3.5. They said also in those notes not to do too many things with it in terms of, I guess, transfer files over, make a separate version as well, and don't write over the older version. Keep the uh, newer version separate, which is very important. And so... I want to see if we can actually pull it in here, what the differences will be, make sure my outputs are good. Because a lot of time guys are creating music and they want to use different software. Pretty simple stuff. So here you see we have it right here. I'm going to close out this at the end here. That's great. And so we see all the tracks. This is just a template I create for the outputs from the MPC. And the MPC outputs are... 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, up to, we're here at 31, 32. So if I have 16 pads and they're filled with sounds, each sound will have a, a stereo output and it'll be in pairs of 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So let's pull up the NPC here, hit this little gear right here, and there we go. As you can see here, this is 2.15. There is not an MPC 3.5 used when you're actually trying to use MPC as an app in a different or a super DAW. That's important. So, but I can come to here though. Still, I can still bring up my MPC project. You know, here's Har right here. I'll pack that on. It loads up quickly. It's right here. I'll put the setup, and you'll see that also. Of course, you can. Uh, I'll pull this up here actually. As I hit a pad, you see these pads here? They're designed to play. Now, I want to make sure the routing's right. So, for example, here you'll see this is, pad, these are pads, and right over here, this is just a program. So, I want to pull something else up. I'm going to go into here. We're going to file. I've got a different project I want to pull up here. This is called my film score stuff. And I'm going to press OK like this. It's going to clear everything out of here and load a different project in here. And I can load do that, of course, with my NBC app. And once I do, oh, a couple plugins are missing. That's OK. I want to check these sounds. Great. And so I come down to here. I've got the same thing set up here. Now, in this case, for the same sounds, You'll see here I have a different output. One is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for pad four. Pad five is nine and ten, and so on. And the last pad here is 31, 32, and that's pad A16. And let's close this out a little bit here. And so if I press, let's see, we're here at this point. I want to have it at 93 here. That's 93. And I'll press play. And you'll see here, these tracks are individually lining up where they are. It's the bass line. That's it, is the audio. Raising the level there. Let's turn up solo. Oops. Let's grab this, there you go. Just sliding them over here. That's pretty cool to have it this way. Now what I also do in my case, I will come to here, I'll have output set up here. 
So for example, I'll come here, I got this track set up, right? And I will come in here to this EQ. This is the Hitsville EQ used like in um, Motown. And this is from UA Audio. So I'll come here, which is Universal Audio. And so I may want to get a mix bus going on, right? It's for the output of everything here. And I got my mix bus set up here. Let's just pick something out here. feel there. I like this one, it's pretty cool. You hear that snare differently here. And this is an EDM mix bus. So I can select different mix buses with this EQ setting. It's R&B. You hear the change. Here's EDM. Get a really great sound. So let's say this would be actually my EQ for the master output, right? I come to here. I'll select this as a uh, API 2500 bus master from UA Audio as well. I'll come in, I want to get me a specific bus master. So there's my mix bus right here. And I want to get a gooey one. I think this is the best one here. I like this one. here. Solid. For this one right here, this is pretty cool. I may adjust my release. Excellent. And then here also on the master output inside of Ableton, I'm going to use this tape to give it that warmth to it. So this is a Studer A800. She said it for a 456. And this is a dance hall type 80s sound. Give that warmth and track totally. Right, I turn this off. You hear the difference? You see the tape stop, the emulation of the tape. So at times I like to come and do certain things inside of a different software and dump the sounds out, of course. And it's really cool to use the MBC for that as well. Now, if you got any questions or you want to know more, you can always join us here in YouTube, in our channel. And we also give lessons, of course, at sailbookings.com. And any questions you got, you can always hit us up, know what's going on, because we do know how to work Ableton Live and how to work this along with the MPC. They work great together. Any questions? If not, I'll see you in a few.